All right. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a true story. It just happened recently. They just reported on it about a young man named Mekul, Mekul Coroseo Cunha. And he's not too young. He's 25, and he lives in Peru. And that's in South America. And you know what else is in South America? The Amazon forest. And he always wanted to go visit the Amazon, and he finally got his chance. And he went to Medidi National Park, which is one of the biggest preserves of the, of the forest there. And while he was at Medidi National Park, he heard of a, a group that was going out called Max Tours. And Max Tours takes them deep into the Amazon. And he thought that sounded really neat. So he signed up with Max Tours. And they set, set off on by boat, because you really can't travel in the Amazon. It's really thick. You have to go by the rivers. And they set off, and they, they traveled down the Tuichi River. And they went really far into the river. They traveled all day. And they finally camped along the river that night. And the group, there were some guides that take them out. And they said, tonight, we're going to go have a ceremony. And we're going to have a ceremony to the gods that are going to we're gonna we're gonna um, ask for you know we're gonna thank them for permission for letting us into the forest and you know what they had at the ceremony? Can you guess what they had? They had um, candles and they had cigarettes and they had coca leaves. You know what coca leaves are? It's like drugs. It like makes your mind all weird. Stay away from drugs, okay? And they had these at this, this, this ceremony, and they were going to appeal to these gods that had the Pachamama, it was like the Mother Nature God. And, you know, Mekul di didn't like that. And he said, I'm not going to go to that ceremony. And he said, oh, but you have to go, you have to go. If you don't go, it's bad luck, and everybody has to go. And he's like, no, I'm not going. And he stood firm. And they went and they had their ceremony that evening. He just got a really creepy feeling. He said, I'm with these people. They're having this ceremony. They're doing who knows what over there. And I'm all alone, this Amazon far away from any of the, the other people in the park. And he's like, he just got a really creepy feeling. He said, I got to get out of here. He says, I have to just go. And he heard this voice telling him, just, just get away, get away. So he started running. And he just left everything. He left his cell phone, he left his sandals, everything. He just started running. And he ran around, and he finally got to a point in the forest where it was calm, and it was really peaceful. And he just relaxed there. And, you know, it got late. It was kind of dark. He couldn't see. And so next thing he knows, it's in the morning. And he wakes up, and he didn't know how he got in the forest. Like, it, it just, he looked totally different in the daytime, and it was all thick. It's not like there's a hiking trail or something. It's all thick. He didn't even know which way to go. He didn't know where the river was, and he was totally lost. So what did he do? He prayed, and he prayed, God, please help me. I don't know how to get out of here. I don't know what to do. And how, and, you know, he started getting thirsty, and he was a little bit hungry too, but he was mostly thirsty. And you know what? He... He said a prayer, and he looked up, and he saw these monkeys. And, and the monkeys were really interested in him because they're like, they never saw a person before. So these monkeys are like, what is this creature? And they're all making chatter and stuff. And he they heard this voice saying, just stay with the monkeys, stay with the monkeys. So he kind of followed the monkeys a little bit. And you know what they did? They could sense that he needed something. And they started dropping fruit from the high trees. They started biting the fruit off and dropping it for him. And this was really good fruit. I mean, it wasn't the kind of fruit that we have, but it was really sweet and it was really good. So he was eating this fruit. And the other thing is, is Mekul was really thirsty. And you can't drink the water. There's tons of water everywhere, but it's all murky and it's got insects in it and it's just all muddy and stuff. And, and so he didn't know what to do, but the monkeys led him to where there was some clean water. So he was drinking this water. And the other thing they did when it got late at night is they led him to this shelter where he could lay down. Because, I mean, there's rain, there's insects, there's snakes, there's all kinds of wild animals and stuff. And here he could be protected. So these monkeys were taking care of him. And he stayed with the monkeys for a while. And meanwhile, his family got nervous. So they were all worried about him. So they came from Peru, his, his dad and his sister and his stepmom. And they came out and they started searching with the rangers and they started looking for him. And they had to search in sections of the forest because it's really big and it's really scary. So they have to just do sections. Meanwhile, the people that he was on the tour with, the, the guides, 
they were getting nervous because they said, if somebody gets lost here, we're in big trouble. Well, our tour business is over. If someone gets lost or injured or anything happens, or maybe he, d he doesn't survive, their tour business is gone. So they started getting nervous and they said, we know why my Mayquil is not here because he didn't go to that ceremony. And so he angered the god Duende and the Duende god, he made the tree god swallow him up and so the rangers aren't gonna be able to find him. And so they thought we have to do something and one of the guides with his own money, he hired these shamans. You know what shamans are? They're like people who can call up the spirits, evil spirits and good spirits. And so he hired these two shamans day and night. And you know how they called their gods? You know what they used? They used wine and beer and confetti and weird crosses. And it was really creepy. But they were convinced that, that they had to do that to get Mekul back. Meanwhile, Mekul is living with the monkeys and doing pretty good. But days go by. And it's the eighth day and they haven't found him yet. And they, the rangers are looking all over, and Mekul starts getting worried. He starts thinking, you know, you know, they might think that I'm not going to survive. And they had already told the family that they probably wouldn't find him alive at that point. If they did find him alive, he'd probably be so delirious, he wouldn't recognize anyone. But Mekul said, i got to get out of here. So what did he do again? He prayed. He prayed that night, that eighth day, and he prayed really earnestly, and he said, God, please help me. I've got to get out of here. My family's probably looking for me, and I can't stay here long term. And he prayed, and he promised all these promises to God. And you know what? The next day, the very next day, he heard a sound. It sounded like a boat motor. And he ran out. He ran toward that sound, and sure enough, there was the Tuichi River. And he's jumping up and down, hey, boat, 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 boat. And they saw him, and they came over, and they rescued him. And he was so happy, and they took him back. And you know what they said, the shaman said? Because they wanted to get paid. They said, oh, we know why they found him, because they found a sock. And they said, because they found that sock, we were able to channel the gods, and they let him go. And they told Mekul that. You know what he said? He said, that is not true at all. He goes, I know exactly what happened. They were doing weird stuff, and God brought me into the forest, in his beautiful forest, and he took care of me with these monkeys. And I was unharmed. I mean, he had some bites, he had some bot flies and things, but not very bad. He was actually doing in pretty good shape. And he was joking with them when they found him, and he was so happy. So, what's the lesson here? The lesson is if you get in a situation where people are doing something that's not right and you hear that voice telling you to get away, you need to just get away. Just do what Mayquil did. He just left. He didn't say, oh, but what if I don't have friends anymore? Or who will take care of me? How will I get a ride back home? Don't worry about that one. God's telling you, your conscience tells you, that's how the Holy Spirit speaks to us, telling you to get away. Do what Mayquil did, okay? And if if God can protect me cool in this Amazon, away from all of civilization, in this really remote place, if God can take care of him there, he can certainly take care of you and I. Okay? So just remember that. I'm going to show you some pictures of me cool. But let's um, bow our heads for a prayer, okay? Dearest Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for taking care of us, for taking care of me cool. Please be with those people in the Amazon that they'll, through this experience and maybe through others, Lord, learn of you, that you are a wonderful God, that you made this beautiful forest, and that you protect all of us and want to bring us into even more of your paradise. And we pray that we will be your witnesses for that. Amen. Okay, before you take the offering, you want to look up there? You can see some pictures. That's, that's, the, that's a picture of the Amazon. I don't know if you can see it too well. Let's see. That's the picture of the boat. Mekul's on that boat, actually. Um, they're going to they're gonna take him off. That's the rescue boat that picked him up. Um, that's May Cole. See, he's smiling. He's in pretty good shape for eight days in the Amazon. And uh, there he's praying. He's thanking God. He was so happy to be found. Um, there he is. He's, he's really happy um, that they found him and that he had that experience. Okay? All right. If you can get the baskets and you can pick up the offering.